On Saturday, the Russian Ministry of Defense announced the first operational use of the nation's KH-47M2 Kinzel hypersonic missile in a missile strike against an alleged weapons depot in western Ukraine. Now, if these reports prove true, this is indeed the first use of this new weapon, but it's not exactly the historic occasion that it may seem. While Russia's Kinzel is indeed hypersonic, it's certainly nothing new. Let's dive into the Kinzel missile. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Now, I usually just do one video a week, but when this story broke over the weekend and I started seeing popular media coverage of the Kinzel, I thought it would be worthwhile for us to have a quick conversation on what the Kinzel really is, and perhaps just as importantly, what it isn't. Hypersonic is a term used to describe platforms that can travel at speeds in excess of Mach 5, or right around 3,836 miles per hour. But the term has really been adopted for advanced new weapon systems that are being developed all around the world. The Kinzel does travel at hypersonic speeds, but it is not one of these advanced new weapons. The truth is, the KH-47M2 Kinzel hypersonic missile is actually little more than a conventional air-launched ballistic missile, with a design that actually dates back to the 1980s. But despite that, it's benefited a great deal from both intentional and less-than-intentional misconceptions about this new class of weapon. It's even often cited as a reason the U.S. is lagging behind Russia in the hypersonic arms race that, as we've discussed before, also isn't exactly what it seems. And for more on that, make sure to check out our video on that very subject. The confusion surrounding the Kinzel really all boils down to one thing. Hypersonic speed isn't actually all that special. Now, there are absolutely advanced new weapons that leverage hypersonic speeds to achieve objectives in new or different ways. The Kinzel just isn't one of them. As we mentioned up top, the hypersonic barrier is Mach 5, and let there be no doubt, that is incredibly fast, but it might not be as fast as you think. As we've discussed in our previous hypersonic coverage, the space shuttle would regularly exceed Mach 25, or better than 17,500 miles per hour during re-entry. In fact, just about every rocket and ballistic missile ever launched has been hypersonic in nature. That means that every ICBM in America's nuclear stockpile, all of Russia's Kinzel missiles, and even Elon Musk's Falcon 9 reusable rocket, all share the distinction of being hypersonic. And in fact, Russia's Kinzel missile has more in common with those other applications than it does with the new slew of hypersonic weapons nations like Russia, China, and the United States are now competing to field. But to better appreciate that, we need to go back to the beginning of the Kinzel story. In 2018, Russian President Vladimir Putin gave a speech that has since become rather infamous, in which he discussed six advanced new Russian weapons that he said would give them a clear advantage over nations in the West, like the United States. Among them were some quite sensational programs, like Russia's nuclear-powered cruise missile that has obviously continued to fail in testing, as well as their Status-6, or Poseidon, 50 or 100 megaton nuclear doomsday torpedo. But one could argue that the two weapons that would kick off this modern hypersonic arms race were the KH-47M2 Kinzel and the Avangard Boost Glide Vehicle. And just to make sure that Russia was already in a commanding lead in this new arms race, Putin announced that the Kinzel, their first hypersonic weapon, had already been in service for nearly a year. But while that was the beginning of the story for many in the media, the Kinzel's real story began all the way back in 1988. You see, the Kinzel isn't a new weapon, so much as it's a modified version of an existing ground-based 9K720 Iskander short-range ballistic missile, with a new guidance system that was designed specifically for air-to-ground operations. Development on this missile that would become the majority of both the Kinzel and the Iskander started in 1988. But prolonged delays, brought about initially by the fall of the Soviet Union in 1991, postponed its first full test flight until 1998, 
After that, a total of 12 more tests were conducted, all at Russia's Kasputin Yar test range, and all held between 1998 and 2005, with the Iskander finally entering operational service the following year, in 2006. Now, like the Kinzel, the Iskander missile achieves hypersonic velocities through a quasi-ballistic flight path that never actually departs the atmosphere, and it can maneuver throughout its trajectory to avoid being intercepted. Now, I want to be clear that the 9K720 Iskander ballistic missile and the KH-47M2 Kinzel ballistic missile are both indeed capable weapons. They're just a far cry from the cutting-edge technology that's usually referenced in conversations about hypersonic missiles. The premise behind the Kinzel missile is honestly a really pretty dated one, so much so that it shares a great deal in common with another effort we've covered in the past, NASA's 2006 program to use the Navy's stockpile of retired AIM-54 Phoenix missiles for hypersonic flight testing. Now, I recommend you check out our full video on the program if you're interested, but just to summarize, the AIM-54 Phoenix missile was a smaller weapon than the Kinzel, with a smaller single-stage solid propellant rocket motor and less fuel on board. But it was no slouch to begin with, with a top speed of Mach 4.3 when being used as an air-to-air -air weapon like it was designed. But by adjusting its flight trajectory to a dramatic ballistic flight path and then launching it at a high speed, NASA believed they could reliably achieve hypersonic velocities greater than Mach 5 with their Phoenix missiles. Now, this effort had nothing to do with fielding an advanced new weapon. It was strictly scientific. They were trying to study the nature of hypersonic flight for a low cost. But Russia's KH-47M2 Kinzel, while larger and carrying a more powerful solid fuel rocket motor, works on the very same premise, using traditional rocket propulsion and a suppressed ballistic flight path to achieve hypersonic speeds. Now, there have been lots of other air-launched ballistic missile efforts over the years, including another that we've covered from 1974 when a U.S. Air Force program successfully air-launched an actual Minuteman 1 ICBM from out the back of a C-5 cargo plane. Now, despite succeeding, that program was obviously shelved, and there have actually been fairly few efforts to field air-launched ballistic missiles since, for the simple reason that it's really tough to differentiate between a nuclear-armed ballistic missile and a conventionally-armed ballistic missile when it's bearing down on you. And there was just too big of a concern for nuclear misunderstandings. Now, as I already mentioned, all ballistic missiles are hypersonic in nature, but today, when people talk about new hypersonic weapons, they're almost always referring to one of two kinds of weapons that are currently either in development or in service with China, Russia, and the United States. These types are hypersonic glide vehicles and hypersonic cruise missiles. Now, the first of those two, hypersonic glide vehicles, aren't all that different from the warheads you might find on a traditional long-range ballistic missile, at least in the early stages of their flight path. They're carried into the atmosphere via high-velocity rocket boosters, just like a traditional ICBM, but often not quite as high. The missile then deploys one or more glide vehicles that rely on momentum and their control surfaces to manage their high-speed descent as they close with their targets, sometimes at speeds that exceed Mach 20. Now, this is the class of advanced hypersonic weapon that both Russia and China claim to have in service. Russia's nuclear-armed avant-garde boost glide system is going to be carried aloft by their forthcoming ICBM, the RS-28 Sarmat, and China's DFZF anti-ship weapon, which is carried aloft by the DF-17 missile, also falls within this category. The United States has a number of similar weapons in development, all conventionally armed, however, like their conventional prompt strike weapon or the AGM-183 air-launched rapid response weapon. Now, the Kinzel is not a hypersonic boost glide vehicle, despite having some degree of maneuverability. It's still just a conventional air-launched ballistic missile. The other type of modern hypersonic weapon is even more advanced. These are hypersonic cruise missiles, and they rely on advanced propulsion systems called scramjets. A scramjet, which is a supersonic combustion ramjet, is a variation on the long-standing ramjet technology that allows for combustion to take place while air is flowing through the engine at supersonic speeds. Now, because scramjets are really only efficient at these really high speeds, 
These missiles are often deployed from fast-moving aircraft, or they rely on another form of propulsion in the first part of their flight path, like a rocket. Sometimes they do both. But from there, hypersonic cruise missiles would work a lot like traditional cruise missiles, at least in theory. They follow a much more horizontal flight path than a boost glide vehicle or ballistic missile, and they maneuver using control surfaces just like an aircraft would to circumvent or defeat enemy defenses. In practice, however, these platforms are way more difficult and expensive to build than traditional cruise missiles or even potentially ballistic missiles. And to date, no nation has successfully fielded a scramjet-powered weapon. So clearly, the Kinzel isn't one of these either. So all of this really begs the question, why are people freaking out over the use of the Kinzel missile when Russia was using Iskander ballistic missiles just like it in Ukraine last week? Well, it really comes down to narrative in Russia's very effective use of the media for their own marketing purposes. We already discussed this at length in a recent video about why Russia has failed to capture air dominance over Ukraine, so let's be brief about it this time. Russia's defense budget tends to hover at around $60 billion per year, which puts them on equal spending footing with nations like the UK, despite maintaining a significantly larger military force. As you'd imagine, that's forced Russia to make some hard decisions regarding the allocation of its budget. So in order to get an influx of cash into Russia's defense apparatus, they have converted a great deal of their military to a sort of marketing machine for foreign weapons and equipment sales. The nation's stagnating economy, which is already struggling under international sanctions before this Ukraine invasion began, really severely limited Russia's ability to modernize its military force. So Russia has continued to fund the development on new weapons and new systems aimed at garnering a great deal of attention for the sole purpose of bringing in deep-pocketed partners. Russia can't afford to mass-produce advanced weapons or advanced systems like the Su-57 stealth fighter or the T-14 Armada tank without foreign interests footing the bill. And in order to attract those foreign buyers, Russia has to present the image of a nation capable of developing weapons that are on par or even superior to that of big spenders in the East and the West. So by taking advantage of the general public's misconceptions when it comes to things like the word hypersonic, Russia is able to convey an image of a 21st century military power for a real bargain. In other words, Russia hopes to secure the funding it needs to actually develop and field advanced cutting-edge tech by presenting the Kinzel and other dated or poorly functioning weapons as advanced cutting-edge tech. While it's technically accurate to call the KH-47M2 Kinzel a hypersonic missile, it's accurate in the same way that we might call Hitler's V-2 rocket a hypersonic missile. Modern hypersonic weapons, like China's DFZF or America's hypersonic attack cruise missile, which is still in development, just belong to completely different classes of weapons. The Kinzel may be hypersonic, but it's nothing new. And on that ends another short-fused edition of Air Power from Sandbox News. I'm Alex Hollings. Make sure you swing by sandboxnews.com today and every day for all the latest in news, entertainment, and motivation from all around the force. If you got anything out of today's video, please click like and subscribe down below and leave me a comment so I know what I should cover next. And of course, don't forget to tap on that bell icon so you never miss a drop from Sandbox News.